Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, my church family. Welcome to this time of worship that we have here at Mount Sterling First United Methodist Church. Thank you all for being here in person, or thank you all for being with us in our online sanctuary. A couple of announcements that I have um, before we get going. Um, Lori Coffey wanted me to make an announcement that your end-of-year contribution reports have been put in the mail, so please be expecting those um, here in the next week. Uh, our church will be offering a CPR certification um, class. If you are interested in that, please see uh, Julie Harmon for our prices and all this other stuff. Uh, I will, uh, I'm asking for prayers um, for me. Uh, I go before the Board of Ordained Ministry tomorrow morning at 845. Um, I will be interviewing uh, in the realm of preaching, uh, I've been working very hard on my preaching over the last year, and um, I'm hoping that this interview will go well, and, and this will determine if I will be fully ordained or not in June. Um, so please, uh, if you have time tomorrow morning at 8.45, say a little prayer. And then I will be out of the office for an extended period of time starting on Wednesday, uh, my plane leaves at 5.45 in the morning. Yay. Yeah. Um, and so we, uh, if there are any uh, pastoral needs or anything like that, I will have their pastor, Laura Barkley, who is the pastor of Carlisle United Methodist Church, will be on call, and she will be here to help you with any pastoral needs. I have um, received your desire for Methodism 101. Our books are on the way, um, and I have started planning that. A cup, there will be six sessions offered during the season of Lent. Three of them will be on Thursday evenings, and then three of them will be on Tuesday evenings. And then we are making it available via Zoom um, we will be recording it on Zoom, and you can, we can pass it on to you, and you can listen um, at your own schedule as well. Our three Thursday dates are February 22nd, February 29th, and then March 7th. All of these will start at 6 o'clock. Our Tuesday dates are March 12th. March 19th, March 26th. These dates will be passed around in our weekly newsletter, in our one call, um, and we will be, be sure everybody knows about these dates as well, So, and your books will arrive. You do not have to read anything for the first day of class or anything like that, so don't worry. Um, so please just mark that down, uh, those dates down. Speaking of more resources, I have been approached um, by several members of our congregation who have asked me for just some resources that they could use to better their own spiritual life. The first one is sponsored by the Upper Room Publishing House, which is the Disciplines. It is literally a one-page little, little paragraph. Starts off with a scripture, usually one or two verses a paragraph, and then a one or two sentence prayer. It can be done at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. Somebody asked me about a Bible reading plan. I have come up with a Bible reading plan that is available at our Welcome Center, right where Justin is, um, here at the back. Uh, you will make your, this is meant to be an introduction to the Bible. You are to read, and it will set up for a full year of reading, broken down by weeks. And there is no week on here except for uh, Easter, when there are more than four readings a week. So I think it's pretty manageable, um, and so I have dedicated time to that. Um, so if you feel called, please take one in the back. Another, and my last one is somebody asked me about their prayer life. The prayer resource that I am going to use is this wonderful book that was just released yesterday. It's called Have a Beautiful, Terrible Day. 
You get it? But all of this is a resource by Reverend Kate Bowler. Uh, I am a big fan of Kate Bowler. I have used a lot of her stuff. And they are literally just prayers. They are, she, when you're feeling too productive, that must be nice. Or for a heartbreak, a divorce, or a breakup. Help me be a peacekeeper. Those are just some of the resources that are in this book. I will place them at the back um, at the end of service if you wish to look at them. um, And we will go from there. Uh, Rebecca asked me to ask that she is still looking for people to help her with our uh, children's ministry. Um, please, if you have some spare time, please see Miss Rebecca. She just needs some like extra set of hands um, or to like help clean up after her crafts or, or something like that. Uh, she just needs some help. So please see Miss Rebecca about helping with our children's ministry. Um, Grace Place is doing wonderfully. We helped a lot of families this past week. Um, It it comes in waves. Um, And so this week, uh, Sally Wilson and PD are asking that we would do like Capri Suns or Kool-Aid or like bottled juices, you know, like those just like a box of juices um, and stuff. That's all the announcements that I have. Are there any announcements and or prayer requests that we want to lift up here? We have Miss Marva here at the back, and David's going to bring the microphone to you so those watching online can hear you. Okay, I had an opportunity to visit Jessie Boyd this week, and she is on oxygen full time. She has the small oxygen tank, but it doesn't work well enough for her condition that she'll be able to use it. So she said she didn't think she'd be able to come to church anymore. So I thought if we sent cards, phone calls, and visit her, it, she would really appreciate it. Jesse Boyd has been a wonderful uh, anchor for our church, and so let's keep her in our prayers, and let's keep in touch with her. We have Miss Selena wants to make an announcement here um, for us. So I have two. One, a prayer request for uh, Jonah's dad, who my son goes to school at Grace Bible Academy. His dad is not doing very well, so if we can just lift him in prayer this morning. Also, my mom is not doing well, so if we can lift her in prayer this morning. And then secondly, if you all have a special talent that you would like to basically, you know, come up here and join us on the stage and, and give that joy to other people, please see me for music or any. Thing. I don't care if it's clogging, dancing, as long as it's appropriate for church service. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, we've had dancing before, so um, I just want, you know, to open that up to everybody. If you have any suggestions for songs or music that you would like us to hear, any special requests, please, you know, see us. We would love to provide that to you all. Thank you. Selena has been doing a great job of planning uh, different styles of music um, and recruiting and just getting wonderful new music for us and so thank you selena for that and we can't do this without you all so if you feel called to share your talent please see miss selena are there any other prayer requests and or announcements this morning hearing and seeing none let us center ourselves for a time of worship as we listen to miss judy mcveigh play our prelude
Wow. I would ask you now to please stand in body or in spirit as we join together for our responsive call to worship this morning, which is inspired by Psalm 111. It is responsive in that there's a line that says, Pastor, I will say that. And then there's a line that says, Congregation, you would say that. So let us join together. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Together we study all that God has done. They are great in number and in power. Look around you like the mountains, the birds, the trees, and all therein. We are created by a wonderful God. Our God is gracious to all that is created because food is provided to us and is ever mindful of the covenant between God and God's creatures. Our God is merciful because God sent redemption to God's people. Holy and awesome is the name of God. Awe and wonder of God is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding of all that is around them. May we praise God now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God of power and of might, You sent prophets to Your people, calling us back to the covenant we made together. In the fullness of time, You sent Your Son, Jesus, teaching with such power and authority that our eyes were opened to see Your ways coming to us again. Open our hearts and minds that we may understand and proclaim Your teachings for all to hear. May we listen for Your presence among us. And may we feel Your Holy Spirit empowering us to be disciples for the transformation of the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to invite you to remain standing for uh, today for our opening songs. Our opening songs will be led by our praise team under the direction of Selena Mullins. Our first song is Chainbreaker, as recorded by Zach Williams. Somebody testify. 
You can clap. Great. Our uh, next song, as our AV team gets ready for it, is uh, Who You Say I Am, as recorded by Hillsong Worship. While they're getting it up, thank you all so much for singing with us this morning. It's so good to see everyone. You all look so beautiful this morning, and everyone that's online, we love you too, and thank you for joining us this morning. Please sing at home too. <laughs> Child of God, yes I am. 
shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Please be seated. Let us join together as we proclaim. Let us join together as we proclaim the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on your hymn book, uh, hymn number 881, or it can be found on the screen behind me. Uh, we will say this together as one voice. So let us join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes to us from the first half of the Bible called the Old Testament from the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Listen now for the word of God. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from, the begin from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Mount Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore, and if I... Ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of that prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the word of the prophet shall speak in my name. I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. This is the word of God for the people of God and all of God's people said, 
Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the second half of the Bible called the New Testament, from the oldest account of the gospel, the gospel according to Mark. And we're picking up exactly where we left off last week with chapter 1. We are starting at verse 21, going to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught there. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was a, um, in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And that man cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of the man. All were amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God, and all of God's people said, thanks be to God. And now we have time with, for our young in age or young in spirit with Miss Rebecca Lytle Thomas. So if you fit one of those categories, come on down. Is it my turn? Is it my turn? All right, all right, all right. Do you know dogs can catch fevers? No. You cool it off with mustard. You cool them off, you know why? Why? Because they're hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I kept waiting for it. <laughs> oh, that was, that was great, it was great. I'm sorry, it was a great one. Rude. Okay, well, David Scott, you have a joke. Are you ready? Okay. Do you want to stand up? Okay. Okay, so a girl asked her father, can I have a Ferrari? Her dad said, if you can spell Ferrari. She said, F-E-R-A-R-I. Uh, uh, he, the dad said, close, but not right. Then the next day, he, uh, she asked, can I get a Lamborghini? Then the dad said, only if you could spell Lamborghini. And then she said, L-A-B-O-R-G-I-N-I. And then he said, close, but still not right. And then, the, and then the next day, she said, Dad, can I get a BMW? That was so much better than Daniel's. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I've been sent a few, so I have one more. But I was told this joke this morning. Okay, this is from the Bible. Are you ready? Did you know that the three wise men were actually firefighters? Do you want to know why? Because they came from afar. <laughs> Gerald, do I do okay? <laughs> no, no. Okay, and Danny has a joke for next week for us. Okay, so... Now let's actually talk about what we're supposed to do. So when you all learn stuff, how do you, uh, where, where does all that stuff come from? How do you learn stuff? Bible. Okay, from the Bible. Think about school, think about ch church, anything. At home, how do you learn stuff? By making mistakes and learning from them. By making mistakes and learning from them, okay. Do, um, do you ever learn from a book? Okay. You said the Bible, right? Do you ever learn from people telling you how to do stuff? Yeah? Okay. Um, do you ever learn something from looking up it, looking it up in, on Google? Okay. Long time ago, before Google, uh, there was something called Google. 
Oh, I didn't mean to. There was something called an encyclopedia. Have you all ever heard of that word? Okay. So it was a, it was a bunch of books in Britannica. And, and they, well, they have them at the library still. And they had different uh, important pieces of information from the world and history and just uh, like geography, all kinds of stuff that you could look up. That was our Google when we were growing up. Okay. But now, um, ne next question. Who teaches you? Um, you? Okay. I teach you. But who else? Our teachers. Your teachers teach you? The Bible, the Bible teaches you? Okay, a pastor teaches you good. Okay, good job. Okay, yeah, right. I know. Um, so those are people that also teach you. And so how to follow rules and the. Okay, well, let me go this way. Who are people in authority? Who has authority? Uh, judges. Judges have authority. Okay. A uh, police officer. Police officers. Who else? Firefighter. There you go. You got that from that joke, didn't you? Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about, authority. Um, teachers also have it. Pastors. Parents. I heard Selena I was going to say that next, too. Did he? Are you a pirate back there? You said, I. I, matey. Okay. Mm, not really. Okay. So, but how do they get that authority? How, okay, you said doctor. How does a doctor have authority? What do they do to have authority? Um, they go to college. They go to college. They have to learn this. How does a teacher have authority to teach kids? They go to college. Same thing. They go to college. Now, a little different. How do parents have authority? They go to college. Do you go to college to be a parent? I knew I was spinning that one a little different. They don't go to college to be a parent. God gave them that authority. God made sure, for instance, you two are my kiddos. God wanted you two to be my kiddos. So he gave me the authority to be in charge of you, to teach you the ways. Okay? Now, what Pastor Daniel was just talking about is Jesus and his authority. So back then, he was going around, walking around, and he was teaching. But really... What gave him the authority to do that? God. God. Well, back then, some, some people, he didn't go to college, okay? Um, but back then, some people could have doubted him. So in the book of Mark, this is an example of really how Jesus has authority. So he's in this place, and he's teaching all these different people, and then all of a sudden, this guy comes in, what gives you the authority to, to tell me what to do? Blah, 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 blah. All this stuff. Okay? Now, really, that guy had something evil inside of him. He had the devil inside of him. He was possessed. And so what Jesus did, and he said, whoa, stop right there. And he said, get out of him. And you know what those, the demons did? It, it made the guy shake, and it came right out of him, and it left, okay? So all the other people that were sitting, they saw what had happened, and they knew then Jesus really did have the authority because even the demons would listen to Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to go learn more in the back about it. And we're going to talk more and read about it and watch about it, okay? So let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the kids that we have here. Thank you for the kids that are watching. We want to thank you for the authority that you have given Jesus. We want to thank you for your authority. We want to thank everybody, the teachers, the pastors, the police officers, the parents that have the authority to teach our kids in the right way and to lead them down the path towards you. Thank you so much, and we love you, Lord. Amen. All right. Congregation, will you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear gracious and holy God, we give you thanks that we have heard your holy word proclaimed to us 
in Scripture, from the Old and from the New Testaments. Lord, be with us as we wrestle with this Scripture, as we wrestle with its call on our lives. Lord, be with us, be with us all, and Lord, use me as you see fit. Use my words to be your words. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So Rebecca was right in that today we are going to be talking about a major word. We're going to be talking about this word, authority. And we're going to start by looking at our reading from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy. And to put it in the most simple of terms, Deuteronomy is all about discerning and doing God's will. Primarily speaking, this is done by following the Ten Commandments at its simplest form. Our passage today is a part of a greater section that goes all the way back to chapter 16. And this section seeks to explain the commandment to honor one's parents. It explains this commandment using this concept of authority. Authority is defined as having the power or the right to do something to enforce obedience, or to make decisions. During this time in the nation of Israel, the Ten Commandments were guidelines. They were the bottom of everything. Everything had to be traced back to them, and all authority, all power, all decision-making came back to them. Moses and the teachers of the law expanded upon the Ten Commandments. And the purpose of that expansion was, as you can imagine, situations arose and people kept asking my favorite question, what about, insert situation, what about this happens? Well, what about when this happens? happens. And that, well, well, what about this? Anybody who's been around young kids knows that these type of situations keep coming up when we're trying to understand something. The people wanted to know how their faith impacted their daily living and their decision-making that they had in their own life. And so, just as you can imagine, again, the execution of this authority took place in different spheres. People in positions of power are needed for an entire group of people to run smoothly. It's just necessary. Kings had authority or power over the social and political realm. Priests had power over interpretations of the law, rituals like purification, and celebrations such as birth or circumcisions. Wise men had authority over things like dream interpretation. Think of Joseph. Think of Daniel. Hi. Prophets had the authority to sound the alarm when things were failing to accomplish their job. And it's the same in our society today. People are given authority over particular realms, particular issues, particular things, and they are given the power to be experts in. And so our passage today is running with this term authority, and especially over the role of a prophet. We have a conversation between God and Moses and God's people happening in our passage today, and the people have made a request 
from God. They said, God, we're having a hard time understanding you. We're having a hard time being on the same page with what you want from us. Can you, I don't know, throw us a bone? Can you, I don't know, provide somebody that can help us with this? We need kind of like another Moses guy. We need kind of a guy like him with his talents. And God said, sure, I will bring somebody up to help you discern my will. Discern my will will. Discerning God's will is something that we each seek to do in our own daily lives. And I have the privilege of something I get to do here at this church every single day. It comes in many different ways and feels very different at different points in life for everybody. At the heart of discerning the will of God is a relationship with God. I'm going to ask you some questions. You ready? All right. (laughs) Ha ha! Gotcha. Brad, I knew you were all. I get you. All right, Jessica, what's my favorite color? Green. Darn it. Okay. (laughs) Selena, what's my favorite food? All right, I'm not going to ask you to. All right. All right, Lee. You ready? I'm ready. What is my father's name? Nobody say anything. I heard that. (laughs) Shh. Bob. Hi, David. He's shaking his head like, nope. (laughs) Your favorite color is purple. It's not? What's your favorite color? Red. Red? That's fair. It's a good, strong color. Julie, what's your favorite food? Chocolate. Chocolate. Darker milk or white? (laughs) Just chocolate. I love that. I love that. Danielle, what's your mom's name? Jane, wonderful. Okay. Brandon. (laughs) Nervous? It's okay. What's your favorite gospel? Matthew, the first one. You reached into a bag, didn't you? That's fair. That's fair. A relationship is all about what you know about somebody, right? It's about getting to know somebody. Brandon, I did not know your your favorite gospel was Matthew. David, I did not know your favorite color was red. And Lee, it's okay you didn't know my father's name. You knew Danielle's mother's name. There you go. So relationships are all about knowledge that you have of each other, right? Figuring each other out, what you like, what you don't like. How do you do that? You ask questions, you spend time with each other, right? You figure it out. Well, we're told all the time about what God knows about us. We're told all the time, Jeremiah 1.5 says, God knows us even before we are formed in the womb. 
God knows us. Psalm 139 said, God knows when we stand up, when we sit down, knows our thoughts from very far away. He knows the words that we speak before we do. God knows us. Knows what we're about. We're told several times that God counts the hairs on the top of our head. For some of us, that's zero. Brad. He got some. Okay, five. But we're told all the time that God knows all of this thing about us. God knows all of these wonderful, beautiful things about us. So it begs the question, what do we know about God? How can we discern the will of God and what God wants for us if we don't spend time with God? How can we know what God has inside of God if we don't ask God questions? If we don't spend time listening for the answers to those questions? I'll give you a hint. At Christmas, we witnessed God coming to us. That God came down to us as a baby, as Jesus. I believe God did that so we can learn all about what God's will for us is. So that we can have that deep relationship with God so we can learn by watching and hopefully imitating. And this is where our Mark passage really helps us out. Our Mark passage follows the typical four-part pattern of a miracle that's found in all of the Gospels. It's just more condensed. First, it starts with a general setting in Capernaum on the Sabbath in a synagogue, and what Jesus was doing, teaching. Second, there comes a response to the teaching. In this case, the response comes from the audience, where they ooh and they ah and they wonder, and they're astounded at his authority. And then there's a response from that one guy in the back. In every crowd and in everywhere we go, we all know that one guy in the back. Third is the re resolution to that response. Jesus casts out the unclean spirit. The poor man convulses on the ground. And then there's the conclusion. Amazement and the spreading of fame. Now, to be preoccupied with the image of an exorcism or the convulsing or, or anything like that, I believe, is to miss the point of the passage. I believe that we have demons all around us. All the time. They just take different forms for everyone. A demon can be hunger. Hunger. Addiction, sadness, loneliness, sexism, racism, classism. It can be a whole host of things. We carry them around with us all the time. However, the placement of our passage today in the story of Jesus is an important thing to recall when we're talking about Jesus' authority when we're talking about how we figure out the will of God. The placement of this passage within our Christian year calls us to remember what we have witnessed. We have witnessed the birth of Jesus at Christmas. 
We have witnessed Jesus' reception of the Holy Spirit at His baptism. And now we see Jesus educating Himself and others on the power of God. The authority of God. Jesus does this and not in an invasive sense. Such as God as someone to fear or to challenge. But in a way that God sees the potential within us. Beyond those demons. Beyond the things that get in the way. God can cast all that away to reveal what has been there all along. That is the will of God. For us not to be weighed down by the things that get in the way. For us not to be weighed down by the things that we give power to. God wants us to live holy. Not only in H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. We are to live into wholeness. To be one with God. We as Christians believe that God created the world and all therein. This creation at the beginning of time was perfect, was peaceful, was complete. There was no sin, there were no scars, there were no demons, there were no things as greed, as addiction, there were no such thing as greed, as sadness or loneliness. It was perfect. It's our scarred, sinful ways that gives way to sinful actions which have corrupted everything around us. If you look at our culture today, we have things that say, you made yourself. You have things that say you, you are your only boss. We love to think that it's because of us and what we did and all that we accomplished is because of who we are. I don't think that's the case. For me, that is such a defensive place to start and to live your life. And that is not what God wants us to do. Our internal conflict of fear is still there when we are presented with this notion of authority. How many of us, when we were younger, And for you young kids, I know you do this, so don't even say you don't. How many of us push the big red button when we're told not to push the big red button? Raise your hand. Hannah Hensley, I'm looking at you. How many of us don't like being told what to do? Oh, Jessica, okay, there we go. We all wrestle with authority we love to think that we are in charge of ourselves and that no one can tell us what to do that no one knows what's better for us than we do but jesus and god come to us not in a way that is invasive that's punishing even though they make these tough statements of be silent, come out of him, 
Or these, or these things like the prophet shall die. These phrases are not meant to convey foolish or brutish or hulking authority. That's not what authority is. Jesus comes to us to convey all of the possibilities that we have in this world. To have in this life. That man who had that unclean spirit only knew one reality. To live with that unclean spirit. To live with that thing carrying on his back. That bag of stones. That was the only reality that that person knew. And it wasn't until Jesus came and actually talked the talk and walked the walk that set that man free and showed him a new way to live. That is true authority. True authority means that there is nothing that God cannot help us overcome. That there may be something out there for you that you have no idea about. That God may have something for you and a new way of being that you know nothing about right now. Each and every one of us has something we're carrying on our back, whether it's pride, whether it's anger, whether it's something that we are carrying that is shaping our reality. That's getting in the way of us having a whole relationship and holy relationship with God. So I'm going to end with this. The good news that goes beyond these Scriptures this morning is that God in the form of Jesus Christ comes to us yet again, not out of wanting to dominate us, but out of love of what's inside us and what lies ahead for us. What can be for us Discerning God's will is a task that is tremendous. But we learn today that God's will for us is to have wholeness with everything around us, with each other, not fearing God, and then challenging God from a defensive, fear-based position. from a place that is submission, a place of trust, a place of confidence in what God wants for us. So my friends, no matter what you are wrestling with, no matter where you are, what you are, no matter what is carrying on your back, true authority of God is that nothing separates you from the love of God. In the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we're going to transition into prayer time. And I want to remind everyone that during our prayer time, you may come, you may kneel at the altar, You may pray in whatever way is most comfortable to you. If you have prayer beads that you want to use, if you want to stand up, if you want to pray with somebody, to hold somebody's hand, to go over to them and to just let them know that we are praying for them, please do so.
That's what this time is all about. So I want to remind everyone of that. And I, I got a notification on my phone from Darlene Blevins um, today that we need to be in prayer for her. She is uh, wrestling with a very tough illness this morning. Um, so we want to be in prayer for Darlene. Are there any other prayer requests that we want to lift up this morning? Hearing and seeing none, let us go to God for a moment of prayer in whatever way God is calling you to pray. Dear God of power, but God of grace and of mercy, God of new possibilities, today we talk about authority as something to be challenged, as something to be feared. But Lord, let us remind ourselves and each other that your authority as our creator, redeemer, as our sustainer comes as a way for us to live into your beautiful creation for us. As we look around the world and see authority being abused. Let us not carry that hate, that fear towards you. You are a God who knows us before we were made. You are a God that knows how many hairs are on our head. You are a God that knows when we stand up, when we sit down. So Lord, let us submit to you as a God who wants nothing but the best wants nothing but wholeness, wants nothing but unparalleled grace for us. Lord, we have lifted up several people in our church, in our congregation, in our community who need to feel this wholeness. Mind, body, soul, physical, emotional, mental. Lord, help us extend to them grace and love that they may get a foretaste of your wholeness. Lord, be with us during this time of prayer, of worship. Be with us as we set forth into our community that is hurting. Lord, be with us.
you are the one who grants all power. Let us go forth and use it for your people. And it starts by praying the prayer that Christ taught his own to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to a time in which we return to God a small portion of that, which through our giving of our tithes, offerings, and gifts. If you are joining us in our online sanctuary, there should be a QR code that will come up on your screen. All you have to do is hover your phone over that with your camera, and it'll take you to a link that you can give to our church online so you can uh, join in this part of the service. For those that are here in person, there are several places throughout our sanctuary that you can get up, that you can put your offering in, or you can have David come around and he will bring the plate to you. So let us give to God a small portion of what we have been given. Please stand in body or in spirit as we sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Creatures here below, praise Him above the heavenly host. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this time in which we can return to you a small portion of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. So Lord, break and bless these gifts. Multiply them in your holy name. Give them to your will, according to your will, for this ministry. For all power and honor and glory are yours. Amen.
Um, Norbert wanted to be here to lead this, but he is uh, home trying to get better. But we want to have a special prayer time um, for Pastor Daniel as he goes for his ordination, and he's going to be traveling for a couple weeks. So I'm going to ask Pastor Daniel if you'll come um, to the altar and kneel at the altar, and I'm going to ask anybody who wants to come up and lay hands on our pastor. Um, throughout the New Testament, we see the laying of hands to... Um, uh, give the power of the Holy Spirit to others um, and those who are comfortable uh, coming up and putting a hand on the pastor or on the shoulder of somebody in front of you um, and for others of you just want to raise your hand at your seat there um, but we want to have this time um, for our pastor dear Heavenly Father we thank you we thank you that you are a mighty and a powerful and a loving and forgiving God. Thank you for the little things that you bless us with and the big things. We thank you for the people of this church. We thank you for our pastor who leads us so very well. We thank you for blessing us with his presence. We know that your timing is perfect, but we're very impatient. Lord, I pray that you would just be with him as he goes to hopefully finish this ordination process, that you would lift the burden of waiting, and that you would let this uh, ordination go through so that he can then move on to continue in his ministry of spreading your word. I pray that he would be refreshed, renewed, strengthened, and I pray that the Holy Spirit would just come on down, come down on him just now and on these people here praying for him. And Jesus, give him the words that he needs, the emotions that he needs, the strength that he needs to finish through this and to keep running, running the race, fighting the good fight. And we know you are the winner, Lord. And we want to be on that team. And we want more team members. And we need those pastors who will lead us, who will comfort us, who will guide us. And we just pray a special blessing on him just now. And for Linda, his wife, renew them as a couple, as ministers. And just, Lord, thank you. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much um, for praying for me. The, this ordination process... Um, We'll learn more about this in our Methodism 101 class, selfish plug, um, has taken me seven years to get to this point. Um, and uh, I, I thank you uh, for your prayers and for your support. Um, I, want, I feel called this morning to lift up a piece of scripture that um, has gotten me through all seven years. It's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses uh, 7 through 9. It's two verses. We have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power of God does not come from us, but from God. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we are not crushed. We are confused but we are not anxious. We are harassed, but we are not abandoned. We are knocked down, but we are not knocked out. I've, hold, I've held that close um, through the seven-year process. Um, so thank you all for praying for me. My interview is at 8.45 tomorrow morning. I would ask you to remain standing for our closing hymn, hymn number 369, which in your hymn book, or found on the screen behind me.
blessed assurance. Authority. The, veer, the very saying of it conjures fear, conjures uncertainty, conjures something to be challenged. I'm here to tell you that God comes in the form of Jesus with special authority, authority that is not not to be feared, that is not to hurt you. God's authority is all about creating new possibilities for you that you may not even conceive. So please bow your head and receive this blessing. Go forth from here knowing that God comes in all authority, all power, God comes not to hurt, but to grow. That God comes not to force, but to love. Go forth from here in the name of God, your Creator, who comes for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, His Son, who will give His life for you so that you can be free. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, to sustain you through this life's journey. Amen.